High atop the Colorado Plateau in northern Arizona, a forest of ponderosa pine is caught in a fast-moving April snowstorm. The growling of big GE locomotives announce approaching trains through the winter scene along the Arizona Transcon. Continuing our trek across the Grand Canyon State, we begin at Williams Junction and follow BNSF's Seligman subdivision east through Flagstaff and directly into the path of the storm. The weather quickly improves as we continue over the Canyon Diablo Bridge and through the big sag into Winslow Yard. The high mountain forests transition into open country, accented by the vividly shaded badlands of the Painted Desert, as trains continue over the Gallup Sub to the New Mexico border. More than 70 trains per day polish the rails of this busy double-track main line that spans the American Southwest. Join us now for Across Arizona, BNSF's Arizona Main Line Part 2. After crossing the Colorado River at the California border, BNSF's Seligman subdivision tackles a 200-mile climb up the west side of the Colorado Plateau, gaining over 6,800 feet in elevation. In part one of this two-part series, we followed the line out of Needles, California, and through the Mojave Desert to Kingman Canyon, then up to Williams Junction, just south of the Grand Canyon. We will now continue our eastward journey through Maine, Belmont, Flagstaff, Darling, and Canyon Diablo before arriving at the crew change point at Winslow. East of here, the Gallup sub continues to the New Mexico border after passing through Holbrook, Arntz, Adamana, located in the Petrified National Forest, and Coronado Junction before reaching the state line beneath the beautiful rock cliffs at Lupton. We pick up the action at West Williams Junction, milepost 375.0 on the Seligman subdivision. The high green is for an eastbound Z train coming off the Peavine from Phoenix, Arizona. With the afternoon sun on its back, BNSF 7001 East slowly climbs the hill. As soon as the clear block comes into view, the engineer will begin notching up the throttle and the train will slowly pick up speed. Sand is applied to the rails for extra traction, while the big GEs battle the last of a 1.8% climb to Williams Junction. Williams Junction was created in 1960 when the 44-mile Williams to Crookton Line relocation was completed, eliminating a difficult portion of track south of here. As you can see, the eastern portion of the line is still used, connecting the Phoenix subdivision to the Transcon. The train continues east toward Winslow on a warm, sunny evening. 
but by morning, the weather will take a turn for the worse. At a quarter to six the next morning, BNSF 7199 East passes through Williams Junction on the number two track. Trains continue to climb the west side of the Colorado Plateau as they pass through Williams Junction. The elevation here is over 6,900 feet and a fast-moving spring snowstorm is blowing across the Arizona Divide. During the night, clouds moved in and a steady rain began to fall. By morning, the rain turned to snow. Near the passenger platform, a clear block shows for a westbound train as the temperature drops and the snow begins to thicken. A taste of things to come. A fairly new GE ES44C4 number 8212 leads a westbound through the gathering storm. The train continues west over a small rise, and within a few minutes, the lights of an eastbound appear as an icy wind whips through Williams Junction. These scenes were shot on April 26, 2014, while a fast-moving snowstorm blew through the area. This sequence of trains is being shown in the exact order in which it was shot, as we followed the railroad east over the top of the divide, which also happened to be the precise path of the storm.
Moving east to milepost 362.1, we arrive at Maine. Named after the USS Maine, which exploded and sank in Havana Harbor in 1898, killing 274 sailors, nearly three quarters of her crew. The explosion remains a mystery to this day. BNSF 4564 leads a manifest bound for Barstow, California, as the morning sky darkens with the storm. Between Maine and Belmont, the double track line continues through the Kaibab National Forest. BNSF 6530 West heads through the winter scene, passing milepost 358. The train disappears into the swirling flakes of the strengthening storm. Meanwhile, two miles to the east at Belmont, BNSF 7540 West passes a water tower near the site of the U.S. Army's Navajo Ordnance Depot, dating back to World War II. This stack train has just crossed the highest point on the Arizona Transcon at 7,354 feet above sea level. It has just started its long 6,800-foot descent to the Colorado River at the California border. As it passes, we hear an eastbound approaching.
wind continues to whip up the snow as the train disappears into the Sea of White. It will soon reach the summit at Ryorden and begin dropping down the east side. The Flagstaff Depot was built by the Santa Fe in 1926 and is located at 1 East Route 66 in Flagstaff. It sits at an elevation of 6,902 feet. Flagstaff was named after a ponderosa pine flagpole made by a scouting party from Boston to celebrate the first U.S. centennial on July 4, 1876. The busy Transcon sees over 70 trains per day, making good use of the double-track main. BNSF 6840 West approaches in a perfect meet. Continuing east of Flagstaff, the snow gets even heavier and the visibility continues to reduce. Several train crews reported signals so plugged with snow they were nearly impossible to see. Another meet is about to take place at McFetridge near milepost 338. BNSF 4121 East appears first through the big snowflakes. NSF 8026 West soon appears on the north track.
The train continues to Flagstaff on the 1.42% grade as we head east along the Seligman sub. Cosnino is located near milepost 333. Here the tracks curve through a small cut in the red soil. Forests of ponderosa pine have given way to clumps of juniper and the snow has let up as BNSF 4471 East rounds the curve just west of Darling. The railroad skirts the southern edge of the San Francisco mountains. At 12,633 feet, Humphreys Peak is the highest point in Arizona and is located around 10 miles north of Flagstaff. The snowstorm has passed and we get a great view of the mountain near West Darling as a westbound grain train rolls to a stop on the north track. Four big diesels are on the point of this loaded 110-car train, with three remote-controlled swing helpers and two more units bringing up the rear. The train comes to a stop at the west end of Darling to let a faster Z train run around it. With the higher priority train out of the way, the grainer begins to move and the mid-train remotes come into view. Darling is located near the historic community of Winona, made popular by the old Route 66 song. With a snow-covered Humphreys Peak for a backdrop, 
BNSF 7920 approaches the east end of Darling and soon switches from power to dynamics for the 1.42% downhill grade, which ends just west of the famous Canyon Diablo Bridge. The train picks up speed as it departs East Darling in an air-perfectly timed meet with a westbound. Continuing east toward Winslow, the Seligman sub exits the Coconino National Forest and enters a more wide open country. Mileboard 311.7 marks the bridge over the Canyon Diablo. At the bottom of the canyon is a dry wash called an arroyo. The steel arch bridge holds both east and westbound tracks 222 feet above the canyon floor. Pillars from the original bridge were shaped from the surrounding Kaibab limestone and were made on site. A westbound crosses the current bridge, which was completed in 1947. The Atlantic and Pacific Railroad was incorporated by Congress in 1866 to build a transcontinental railroad connecting Missouri and Arkansas with California. The tracks reached Canyon Diablo around 1882, and construction was delayed after it was discovered that the original bridge they ordered was too short for the canyon. It took six months to order another bridge of the correct dimensions and have it shipped to the work site. So during that time, the Transcontinental Railroad ended right here. On a different day, we caught a work gang crossing the bridge on the north track. A westbound Z passes at track speed with bells and whistles.
A ghost town lies on the east side of the canyon. It is the remains of a western town that was said to be wilder than Tombstone and Dodge City combined. The population of 2000 was made up of railroad workers, outlaws, gamblers, and prostitutes. The main street was named Hell Street, and the town's first marshal was said to have been sworn in by 3 p.m. and buried by 8. Today, the town is all but a memory, and its silent remains stand witness to passing trains. BNSF 6818 heads west through Canyon Diablo and over the bridge, which is almost invisible from here. warm afternoon breeze rustles the grass, stretching to the edge of the painted desert as a westbound approaches Canyon Diablo. It is a part of the west that has changed little since the rails were first laid here in the late 19th century. The San Francisco peaks rise above the western horizon as the railroad skirts the southern edge of the painted desert. This is known as sunshine on the Seligman Sub. The sun-baked red sandstone stands in contrast to the blue sky in a striking landscape that seems to swallow up trains that run through it. An eastbound double stack heads down grade toward Winslow and the afternoon breeze masks the sound of its passing.
Train crews operating over this portion of the Seligman subdivision are working between Needles, California and Winslow, Arizona, a distance of around 294 miles. The crew of this train has only 20 miles to go before tying up at Winslow. The crew of this westbound has only been on duty a short time as it climbs the 1.42% grade through sunshine. Nine engines are in charge of a 109-car grain shuttle running 4 by 3 by 2 The Dash 9 on the point leads a charge up the hill while the three engines behind it are offline to conserve fuel.
The San Francisco mountains reach skyward behind the Big Sag just west of Winslow Yard. Looking the other direction, BNSF 6649 leads a loaded coal train west after making a crew change. It will continue under the overpass we perched on and through the Big Sag as it departs town. A distant headlight shows as an eastbound descends the far side of the sag over five miles away. Cutting to a wide shot gives you a better idea of the distance across the sag as two remote-controlled GEs shove the rear of the coal train out of the yard. We watch as the two trains meet at the bottom of the sag, while traffic on nearby Interstate 40 shuffles past. The train slows as it approaches Winslow for a crew change. Vintage Santa Fe cabooses and a big hook are on display at a small park located next to the BNSF yard in Winslow. This is a division point on the Southern Transcon, with a Gallup sub continuing east into New Mexico. Another eastbound with stacks and trailers rolls through the yard. The elevation continues to drop as trains head east. Winslow sits at 4,850 feet above sea level at the border of Coconino and Navajo counties. A notable attraction is a La Posada Hotel, a former Harvey house built in 1930. The Mission and Spanish Colonial Revival style hotel was one of the last built across the American Southwest. It was closed in 1957. Today, the historic hotel is again alive and well and includes a museum. It still serves the railroad as a stop for Amtrak's Southwest Chief. From the passenger platform, a local is seen departing Winslow to serve a customer at Adamana, around 40 miles to the east.
Just east of town, BNSF 4053 West approaches the busy yard for a crew change. At Joseph City, the Choya power plant stands near the main line at milepost 263.5. The coal-fired plant produces 995 megawatts of electricity. It uses coal from the McKinley mine in New Mexico and is served by the BNSF. The evening sun begins to break under a bank of storm clouds, bathing an eastbound grain train in golden light. A few minutes later, an eastbound Z train heads into the dusk as the sun disappears for the night. Moving on to Holbrook, BNSF 7301 West ducks under a signal bridge at the east end of town as it drags a Barstow-bound manifest past the junction with the Apache Railway. The Apache Railway served a paper mill in Snowflake, Arizona, but in 2012 the mill closed permanently, leaving the railroad an undetermined fate.
BNSF 7301 comes to a stop and soon another train is heard coming from the east. It's the local we saw earlier leaving Winslow, now on its return trip. Although hard to make out, it's nice to see classic EMDs in heritage colors still earning revenue for the railroad. As the local runs past, the Manifest Train's DP lets off air, sounding as if it's disgusted to have to wait for the little train. The next morning, the old station at Holbrook basks in the cool sunshine as Amtrak number four, the eastbound Southwest Chief, heads through town on its way to Chicago. Red Buttes, just east of Holbrook, make a nice backdrop for westbound trains in the late afternoon. BNSF 8094 West heads into the setting sun on the number two track. The Gallup sub sees left hand running beginning at Winslow. Just as soon as the westbound disappears, an eastbound auto rack train is heard approaching.
The next morning, we head east through the buttes to get a view from the other side. BNSF 7255 East rolls through the high-speed curve near milepost 250. The open country of eastern Arizona between Holbrook and the New Mexico border appears remote and desolate, attracting the occasional seekers of meteorites and petrified wood. Yet there is beauty in the vast outstretched land through which trains run back and forth on a highway paved with steel. BNSF 6798 East races past a rural crossing near Arntz as it heads toward the petrified forest. The railroad follows the Puerco River as it travels between Holbrook and the Petrified Forest. The river is not visible from this angle, however a westbound manifest is seen passing station sign Arntz, which is milepost 243.5 on the Gallup Sub. We watch as a train glides along the fairly level track on its way to Winslow. The signals near mile 245 glow in the evening sun and an eastbound stack train sprints toward New Mexico. 
In addition to the two engines on the point, two more remote-controlled diesels are assisting this heavy stack train from the rear. The sun has dipped below the western horizon, and darkness will soon cover the land. A shimmering light in the distance announces the westbound Amtrak 3 as it heads between Chicago and Los Angeles. The train is due in at Winslow at 7.50 p.m. and is pretty close to being on time. The Petrified Forest National Park straddles the border between Apache and Navajo County in eastern Arizona. The northern end of the park extends into the Painted Desert, where the eroded badlands composed of siltstone, mudstone, and shale decorate an area of over 7,500 square miles. The southern transcon cuts through the park just north of large mounds known as the teepees, which are a popular attraction to park visitors. On the Gallup subdivision, this is known as Atamana and is located near a ghost town which was once known as the Gateway to the Painted Desert. The town was named after a local sheep rancher, Adam Hanna, and was settled in 1896 when Arizona was just a territory. BNSF serves a gas plant here, which is the reason Atamana appears on the timetable. BNSF 4601 takes an eastbound manifest through the park.
Continuing south of the main line, we see where the petrified forest got its name. What appear to be boulders on the desert floor are actually petrified logs. A close examination reveals ancient trees which have been converted to stone. These are not actual trees, but rather natural replicas of the original material. Wood has been replaced with minerals, retaining its exact shape right down to the microscopic level. We get these scenes from within the park at Jasper Point. From here, if we look up to the north, we can make out the Transcon at Atamana and an eastbound stack train making its way through the Petrified Forest National Park. As we head back toward the main line, we come across the ruins at Puerco Pueblo to the east of Atamana. Dating back to 1215 AD, the ruins were home to an ancient people who knew well the old trails through this country, now long forgotten. Today, the old ruins overlook one of the busiest railroad lines in America. Many of our nation's goods travel this relatively new trail by comparison. An eastbound stack train meets a westbound grain shuttle, where the railroad dissects the park. The Gallup subdivision angles to the northeast as it nears the New Mexico border. At Pinta, milepost 219.2, a westbound stack train rolls beneath the low red rock buttes that border the braided wash of the Puerco River. BNSF 9125, an EMD SD-70 Ace, leads a former Burlington Northern SD-70 Mac 
and two Norfolk Southern-9 40CWs toward Coronado Junction, around five miles east of Pinta. The train will be diverging onto a branch line which serves power plants at Coronado and Springerville. The Coronado sub runs 39.5 miles south to Tepco Junction, where the service track for the Coronado plant begins. The Springerville sub continues south of the junction for around 30 miles and serves four additional power plants. Low sulfur coal is brought in from the McKinley mine located near the New Mexico border, as well as Wyoming's Powder River Basin. The coal train crosses a bridge over Crazy Creek as it slows to enter East Coronado Junction at milepost 214.8. Another westbound coal train led by BNSF 8767 passes Chambers and an old water tank located at milepost 205.8. This train has a track warrant to enter the Coronado sub and will be reaching the junction in just a few minutes. We are now at the extreme east end of Arizona, as an eastbound stack train nears Lupton. The invisible line that marks the border with New Mexico runs along the red sandstone mesas on the horizon, nearly paralleling the railroad at this point.
Moving to a lower angle, another eastbound stacker soon passes. Lupton was established in 1905 by trainmaster G.W. Lupton and is located just 21 miles southwest of Gallup, New Mexico, namesake for the subdivision. A westbound manifest has just crossed into Arizona as it passes by. The blue unit is an ex Sioux Line SD60 leased by CIT Rail. Final train of the day ducks under Interstate 40 and crosses into Arizona at Lupton. The state line actually runs between the signal bridge and the highway overpass in the distance. This is the same coal train we caught at Coronado Junction. Here it coasts along the 0.6% downhill grade in the late afternoon. Dusk settles in as the Arizona Transcon passes into the Earth's shadow and a headlight pierces through the gathering darkness. A trio of GEs are preparing to take an eastbound stack train on a midnight run through the state of New Mexico, with two more remote-controlled diesels bringing up the rear for good measure. The train approaches a little-used grade crossing in the desert east of Holbrook.
for more than 130 years. These rails have carried passengers and freight on a steel road that spans the state of Arizona and the continent. It remains one of the busiest rail corridors in the western United States and a favorite for rail fans to visit. We hope you've enjoyed this journey across Arizona on BNSF's Seligman and Gallup subdivisions. As always, thanks for watching.